been getting pretty tired of the same old menu all the time. Aren't you able to come up with any new ideas already? We should be able to provide our guests with unique dishes all the time, so that we stand out from our competitors. Hello, Barbara. I hope you're doing well. I have several new dishes that I want to add to our menu. But Benjamin still hasn't given his approval on any of them yet. Oh, but my Benny's always so busy. You must know that by now. He's not able to take that much time out of his schedule to accommodate you. Maybe you need to think of a better way to propose your ideas to him. Isn't there a way to get his approval without wasting any of his precious time? Of course I try to keep that in mind when I share my ideas with him. But if he wants to taste everything before adding any new dishes to our menu, I want to make sure that he can enjoy it in the most delicious state. So I always accommodate his schedule to work out a good time for him to come to the restaurant. But unfortunately, he rarely comes at the time that we agreed on. What are you trying to say? Are you trying to imply that Benny is to blame for this? Absolutely not. But I just don't know what more we can do. He probably knows that your cooking is nothing worth putting on our menu anyways. That's why he doesn't want the extra burden of having to travel all the way there only to have a disappointing meal. Why don't you come up with a dish that we would actually enjoy? I'm confident that all the dishes that I've come up with are quite delicious and that our regular customers would enjoy them very much. So that's why it's important that Benjamin keeps his word about our meeting time. That way I can time the meal preparation accordingly and he'll be able to enjoy the dish as it's meant to be served. I know that I've had to ask him to avoid visiting the restaurant during our busy time. There's not much more we can do unless Benjamin is also willing to give us the same kind of courtesy. You have no right to blame Benny. Obviously, it just means that you're not putting in enough effort. You've been working for us for a long time now, right? I hope you don't think that it gives you any right to demand anything, just because you've spent more time at the restaurant than anyone else? Of course not. I absolutely don't think that, and I'm sorry if you may have gotten the wrong impression. Besides, why should my Benny have to accommodate your schedule in the first place? He can't just appear at the restaurant when you call for him. I've told you that he's an extremely busy man. You should at least have enough consideration to offer going to him when he can accommodate you. That's not really ideal, since I can't leave the restaurant unattended. I know that there are other staff who are more than capable of managing everything, but it's my duty as head chef to oversee everything. And whenever Benjamin calls to say that he can meet me, it's almost always during our busy time. So, unfortunately, I've had to turn him down on several occasions because I was unable to leave. Oh, so what you're saying is that Benny has offered to meet with you, but you've been ignoring him. He says that he's able to see you when he calls, right? So, why don't you just take him up on his offer right then? What are you doing instead? Of course I'm working in the kitchen to make sure that all the orders get prepared in time, with hardly even a moment to catch my breath. And whenever Benjamin is called in the past, it's always during our lunch or dinner rush, so I'm usually not able to even take his call. I've asked him repeatedly to avoid calling during those times, but perhaps he just forgets. That's ridiculous! When he calls, you should pick up! What's so difficult about that? Benny is giving you such an easy opportunity to redeem yourself and to prove that your skills as a chef are worthy enough for his restaurant. But you still choose to ignore him? That's just too bad for you then. But what can you expect? I've been told that my job at the restaurant should be top priority at all times no matter what. Especially with the limited staff that we have. Everyone must pull their weight to make sure that everything runs properly. I know that I brought this up with you and Benjamin more than once before, but it still remains an issue for us. We have nowhere near the number of staff that we need. That's just nonsense! If we bring in any more staff, our overall profit will go down for sure. And you've always been able to manage somehow with this number, so I don't really see what the big problem is. Besides, it's not your position to make these kinds of decisions. Who do you think pays your salary? I am very much aware of that, but we're also working at full capacity, all the time. There's barely even any time to take a break. 
I'm just asking that you consider our situation and rethink your decision about hiring more staff. Well, unfortunately, it just seems to me that you're looking for someone else to blame for your lack of skill as head chef. And there must be something wrong with your sense of taste if Benny hasn't approved any of your new menu ideas. I'm starting to think that I've made a mistake in appointing you as head chef. Perhaps I need to rethink leaving the restaurant operation up to you anymore. If we want the restaurant to run more smoothly and efficiently, perhaps the first step is getting rid of you. What? After all these years, is that really how you think of me? Have I not made any positive impact on the restaurant's business? Oh, don't flatter yourself. Perhaps you need a harsh reality check, so let me be honest with you. The only reason that you're the head chef now is because you've been with us longer than anyone else. We've only kept you for all these years out of compassion. I see. I sort of had the feeling that was the case. So I guess my assumption was correct. What can I say? I mean, I've dedicated the past 10 years to this restaurant. If I say that I'm not disappointed, that would be a lie. You want to call yourself head chef, but you're not even able to come up with a new menu that's satisfactory? Don't forget that we can get rid of you at any time. I'm sure we'll find a better replacement right away. Keep that in mind and put more effort into what you do. Yes, I'm sorry. And I assure you that I'll put in more effort than ever before. I am very sorry for messaging you this late. But I just wanted to follow up on the menu proposal from the other day. When would you be able to come in and taste it? If you approve of it after the sample, I'd like to put it on our seasonal menu right away. Oh, that's right. I completely forgot about that. My bad. You know, I just graduated from college and it's my first year in the real world, so I've been really busy. Besides, I'd much rather be hanging out with my friends right now than having to taste some hoity-toity pretentious food all the time. I mean, why don't you try putting some wings on the menu or something? Well, I can certainly take that under consideration. Listen, I don't want to keep you from doing what you want. But I'm sure that you're well aware of this restaurant's rules. No new dishes will be added to the menu without your approval first. I know that. But you said something about using eggplant in the new dish, which I hate. I don't even want to try it, to be honest. So I might have been unconsciously avoiding arranging a time to try it. I'm sorry that it's not a favorite of yours, but eggplant is in season right now and really delicious. I tried to replace it with a different vegetable that you're more likely to enjoy, but nothing else really brought all the flavors and textures together like the eggplant. We've also been getting requests from many of our regular customers that they would like to try some dishes using eggplant. However, since we always avoid using any ingredients that aren't to your liking, there's a bit of imbalance towards the ones that we keep including. So why would you include eggplant in the new menu idea now? I've hated eggplant since I was a kid. Is this some kind of payback towards me? Absolutely not. But if we keep using only the ingredients that you enjoy, I feel like our menu will be somewhat biased. I just thought that it would be better to include a variety of seasonal ingredients in our dishes, so that we can meet our customers' requests. But it's not a really tempting offer for me. I have to go all the way to the restaurant only to be forced to eat something that I know I'll hate? Don't worry, I've already taken that into consideration, and prepared the dish so the non-eggplant lovers can enjoy it as well. I spent a lot of time experimenting with all the different flavors, so you won't be disappointed with what I've come up with. And I can assure you that it's delicious. Really? But it's not going to turn me into an eggplant lover overnight. I'm still going to hate it afterwards. Besides, my mom never made me eat anything I didn't like. Why should I have to do that for you? You're trying to force me to try it. No matter how many times I've told you that, I won't. You're just being a bully now. I never knew that you were so mean. I'm sorry. That isn't my intention at all. I was just thinking about our customers and wanting to please them first and foremost. Sure, whatever. Anyways, I don't have anything planned for today, so I guess I can go over to the restaurant. I'll be there around noon, so make sure that you have everything ready. 
Wait, no, that's right in the middle of our lunch rush. I won't be able to properly serve you then. Are you able to come after our lunch time? What? So you're trying to give me orders now? Don't you know how busy I am? I'm already going out of my way to make time for you. In that case, I'll never go over there again. But there's a rumor that a very famous food critic will be in the area soon. It was mentioned in his blog recently. So we've been especially mindful of providing our best service to our customers these days, because who knows when that critic will be in here. He might even come here undercover, pretending to be a regular customer. And depending on his review of the restaurant, it'll have a huge impact on the number of people who come in here afterwards. That's how famous and influential he is. What does that even have to do with me? What difference will it make whether one food critic writes a review about us or not? All you have to do is serve delicious food, provide good service, and cater to the needs of the customers. Is it really that hard? You're right, of course. But in that case, please make sure that you keep your voice down while you're here. That's the one thing I'll ask that you promise. What do you mean by that? Well, you always like to make your presence known by raising your voice every time you're here. But that kind of rowdiness, especially during business hours, is more of an annoyance than anything. Of course, you can make all the noise you want as long as there are no customers. Are you telling me what to do again? Really, you're too full of yourself. You better not forget who you're talking to. I'm sorry if I was out of line, but it's something that affects the restaurant's image, so I thought that it should be my duty as head chef to let you know. Whatever, just have that meal ready for me tomorrow. If the new dish that you're so proud of isn't as good as you say, you better be prepared for whatever comes next. Yes, I understand. I have full confidence in it. Don't worry. Is it really true? I heard from Benny that your new dish includes eggplant as one of the main ingredients. Why would you purposely use an ingredient that you know he hates? That's just cruel! And you want to call yourself head chef? A proper head chef should take into consideration the likes and dislikes of the customer. Some of our regular customers have repeatedly asked that we include more vegetables on the menu, especially seasonal vegetables like eggplant. And I've always felt that we don't provide such a large variety of vegetables either, so I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to do so. I'm sure that our customers will enjoy the new dish that I've come up with. And don't worry, I know that eggplant isn't a favorite for everyone, so I've arranged it in a way that even non-eggplant lovers will find it pleasant. Oh, really? Because my son said that this so-called arranged recipe tasted terrible. He was hardly able to finish his plate. That's not true, because I watched him finish everything on his plate except for the eggplant, and he seemed perfectly satisfied with the dish. But he was adamant about not even taking a bite of the eggplant because he doesn't like it. And of course, I couldn't force him to try it, so unfortunately, he left the eggplant untouched. So for now, it still remains undecided whether the new dish will be added to the menu or not. Well, if you're not planning to replace the eggplant with something that tastes better, it's not going on the menu. At least that's what Benny told me. And of course, he has the final say in everything. Especially because this is going to be Benny's restaurant soon. What do you mean by that? To be honest, I'm just downright disappointed in you. You're not suitable to be the head chef of a restaurant. We don't need you anymore. You're fired. What? You don't really mean that, do you? Of course I mean it. Who needs a head chef that's as unaccommodating as you? As a matter of fact, I've just decided that Benny will take over as the new head chef from tomorrow. And my decision is absolute. Don't even waste your time trying to change my mind. Today will be your last day working for us. How could you? Perhaps you need to go and refine your palate so you have a better sense of taste. Don't forget to leave your recipes and resignation letter on your way out. Oh, well, you better leave the recipe for that new dish as well. I'm sure my Benny will come up with a delicious arrangement that will definitely satisfy our customers. 
I see, then I guess I have no other choice than to resign, if that's how you really feel about me. But keep in mind that I won't be coming back here ever again. Don't be so full of yourself. We don't need anything from such an unskilled chef anyways. You can forget all about me and do whatever you please. Christian, where are you? You have to come back to the restaurant right away and get the kitchen back in order. Everything is such a mess right now. Yes, so it seems. But remember that I no longer work there, so it has nothing to do with me anymore. Don't act like it's not your problem. You knew this would be the outcome when you quit. Sure, I had somewhat of an idea about what would happen. But I never imagined that your son would be that bad at cooking. I read the article about your restaurant on that food critic's blog. He really tore into Benjamin and mocked everything about him. It was quite entertaining to read. What article? What are you even talking about? I know nothing of any kind of food critic coming here, or any article written about our restaurant. Really? Because I certainly mentioned it to Benjamin before. There were rumors that a very famous food critic was in the area. And it seems like he visited your restaurant today, and already posted that hysterical article. He wrote that Benjamin's innovative cuisine was barely edible. But he used your recipe. Why didn't it turn out the way it should? Maybe there was something wrong with your recipe. No, he didn't actually follow my recipe. In fact, he tried to be creative in his own way and ended up serving an utter disaster. Those were the words of the food critics, not mine. But anyways, it also said that Benjamin replaced the eggplant with jalapeno poppers just because they're one of his favorite vegetables. The food critic wrote that he sat down with the chef and talked about the recipe as if they were old friends. Wait. So you're saying that guy was the food critic, and he wrote that blog about us. But he was just talking, and hardly touched his plate. He's known to always finish everything on his plate, because he thinks that that is the best kind of respect that he can give to the chef that prepared his meal. But I guess in this case, the food was so terrible that he couldn't bear to eat it. It really makes me wonder what Benjamin's sense of taste is like. Did he even taste his own cooking? Wait. That food critic really wrote all of that in his blog? Won't that affect our business? I would think so. Regardless, he's known to be pretty harsh in his reviews, so he never sugarcoats any of his comments. But his reviews are always reliable, so he has a large number of followers who take his review seriously. I know that the restaurants that he's criticized in the past lost about half of their customers because of his bad review. Are you serious? Why did he have to come today? Well, at least your restaurant has many regular customers, so I'm sure you'll be fine. But don't forget that I was the one who served all those regular customers over the years. You should be grateful for that. Actually, even those so-called regular customers were insulting the cooking and started getting really angry. They demanded to see the head chef because nothing tasted the way it should. So I explained to them that we let you go. And you'll never believe what they did after I told them. They just got up and left, saying that they'll never be back ever again. Isn't that too bad? I never realized they had become so loyal to me, but it also makes me very proud. Come back here right now. I'll even give you your old position back. No, oh, I've actually been hired as the head chef at a different restaurant now. So I'm never going back there again. What? They've been trying to recruit me for a while now. But I've been refusing their offer because I had my duty there as a head chef. When you fired me, it gave me the perfect opportunity to finally accept their offer. So I've officially been hired by them now. I'll even start working in the kitchen tomorrow, so I'll be ready to serve the food critic whenever he comes. I'll never allow that to happen. Get back here right now. If you're not here to manage the kitchen, this restaurant will go under. It took you long enough to realize, but it's too late now. 
I gave your restaurant 10 loyal years of my career, but you refuse to acknowledge the positive impact that I've had as head chef. You continuously insulted me and pretty much gave me no other choice than to quit. As someone who runs a business, you should never feel entitled to look down on the people who work for you. Don't forget that we're just as dedicated as you to the restaurant's success. But if you don't appreciate our hard work, you're just paving the way for your own destruction. The next day, the food critic appeared at Christian's new restaurant, just as he predicted, and gave a rave review of his cooking. He also had a great laugh about the episode at Barbara's restaurant and left with a full stomach. Thanks to all the praise that Christian received in the food critic's review, and together with the ridiculous episode in his former workplace, he became quite famous among the blogger's fans. In fact, Christian's restaurant was such a great success that it was a much talked about topic for many years after that. And of course, he brought all of his loyal customers from his previous restaurant over to his new place, where they now continue to be his regular customers again. On the other hand, Barbara's restaurant never recovered from the terrible reviews and ended up going out of business shortly after. They never felt the need to show any appreciation to those who worked so hard to support their business. So it only makes sense that they ended up losing everything. They never lifted a finger, but always felt entitled to impose their one-sided opinions on everyone. They only got what they deserved in the end.